guys, now that we have a broader definition on enthalpy, I think the most reasonable thing to do is actually study sensible heat. Or whenever I mean sensible heat, it's also sensible enthalpy. And this is the most common enthalpy type. Actually, I'm pretty sure that the scientists that started studying this probably done these experiments on sensible heat. And this is due to the change on enthalpy associated with temperature change. So that's very important. Whenever you have a temperature change due to heat, this is because of sensible heat. So you have the sun right here and you take out, I don't know, maybe your towel because it's wet. You're going to see that it's going to increment its temperature and it's going to evaporate the water inside that because of the sensible heat you're increasing the temperature of the towel and it's evaporating the water as well. Uh, you probably know that you need heat to increase the system temperature and for the other side you also need that you need to cool to take out temperature. And also I want to tell you that probably you've cooked before, hopefully you have done that, you need more temperature so the more temperature you add the faster you will get it and you know that you require more, more heat, you will have a electricity bill, uh, large, uh, let's say with higher prices than before or the cost will incre increase and you also know that if you increase the mass it's not the same to make a small sausage than a huge sausage like this you know that this may take about five minutes and you will cook it and you only require, I don't know, maybe one cubic uh, square centimeter of the space and this needs a lot of space and a lot, a lot of time that means also that you need more heat whenever you have more mass so we've seen more temperature implies more heat more mass implies also more heat and once again I told you the same example some substances take a lot of time to cook let's say some vegetables take a lot of time to cook and other vegetables cook very rapid and you will see this in here actually let me add this remarks or notes heat is dependent on mass heat is dependent on the type of substances some substances will increase the temperature very very fast some substances will increase the temperature not so fast and some substances will almost not increase and also depends on the change in temperature if you want to change the temperature from 25 celsius to 26 celsius which is almost nothing you know that in the weather one celsius is nothing but if you wanted to change from 25 celsius that same amount of let's say water to 40 celsius you will need to go and grab a coffee machine and increase the amount of heat duty so hopefully you're getting the idea on why do we need heat the more we need mass the more we change the substances and the more we want delta in temperatures Eventually, you probably are getting this concept right here, which you probably know by now. Uh, is the heat equation. Just let me tell you that this is for constant pressure only. And essentially, it's the amount of mass times the heat capacity, which we'll be analyzing later, times the change in temperature will give you the heat here. And this heat specifically, it's called sensible heat or sensible enthalpy. So actually this at the same time is a change on enthalpy. So once again let me tell you M is for mass, C we're going to see it later, specific heat capacity of that substance. It depends on the substance. So if you're using water, copper, aluminum, mercury, butane, etc. you're going to be changing those. And the change in temperature once again, more temperature change, more heat is required. And before going to this very important topic, let me just tell you that this equation is just valid at either constant pressure or constant volume. We're going to see that in the next video.
What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.